What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 151 of Nintendo Power Block. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deergan. Alongside me, as always, is that retro code, Eddie V. This needs to remake, and it needs to come back on Switch. Hello, everybody. Uh, what, Samus Returns? Uh, Super Metroid. Oh, uh, Super Metroid. All right, uh, well, that's fine, too. But yeah, give me Samus Return. On give, the give them all. Awesome. Give me them all. You know what I mean? Just throw them all on there. Just remake them yes. all. Ed, yeah. I'm very excited to be loud and obnoxious today because my wife and kid are out of the house. And I know the last couple of weeks have been kind of like, you know, almost NPR-ish. <laughs> 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 uh, but, you know, I'm a, I can be loud. I can be boisterous. I can just be yes. excited. And, Ed, we've got a lot to talk about today. I'm, I'm kind of excited because this is kind of like the first real episode that we're diving into our new kind of format, even though... You know, 150, we kind of did, but it was more about reading the questions than, than stuff. So, uh, for yes. uh, oh, also, Jesse's not here. He's not going to be here for a couple weeks, uh, just taking care of some family things and, and doing stuff. So, uh, yeah, he's not going to be with us for, what, two weeks, I think he said. But uh, yeah, it was kind of an emergency this week, which is totally understandable. But, uh, yeah, send good vibes Jesse's way. And, uh, yeah, at Phantom Maggot AX on Twitter. Send him some good love. Uh, anyways, we're, we're starting a new format, our more conversational format this week uh, about what we've been playing and kind of news-ish conversations instead of, you know, the robotic way of listing things and whatever. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm 151. 151, Ed. <sighs> well, five, who's, uh, who's downloading the show still? Who's 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 downloading the show still? I think a lot of people are. Uh, I mean, I like, come on, I I I just can't believe it, really. But you know, whatever. It's it's our show. It's it's been a good time. So we're thank wrapping. You, thank, this thank is actually the last everybody. episode, everybody. We're wrapping it up. Oh no 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 I'm no! I'm just no, kidding. No, no. I'm just kidding. No 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 no. I'm just kidding, Ed. And and before we before we actually really get into the show. You know, I just I want to tell you that I appreciate you, and I'm I'm really happy that you you know you and I started the show and doing it, and I really appreciate you and podcasting with you and and Aww. listening to your often outlandish opinions and sometimes wrong. That's okay. You're allowed <laughs> you're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> I, 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 I'm wrong till I'm well. I'm right. I'm opinionated until I'm proven wrong. I know. I'm just and... messing with you. I just, I just sometimes, sometimes we like don't have the same opinions on things, and I just like to say it's okay to be wrong. Hey, I took the L with, <laughs> look, I took the L with the Pokemon thing. Hey, man, it's fine. It's fine. You know what? It's all right. That's what this show is built on. You know what I mean? Yes. Ah, oh, man. Uh, we're gonna skip housekeeping today since you know we've got a lot to kind of discuss uh we're gonna jump into what we've been playing ed i'm gonna start because i've been playing some interesting games and i know you reviewed one of them so uh yes i would i i i kind of want to start today i've been playing uh first i'm going to start off with this little indie game called hook it's this uh it's literally just a a simple kind of relaxing puzzle game where it's basically you have these straight they're you, you pretty much it looks like you're kind of lock picking almost the puzzles mm-hmm. the way the puzzles are designed and you have to figure out uh which uh, uh pieces to to move uh before you move these other ones because the two basic forms i've i've encountered so far are just there there's ones that go straight up and straight up and down or side to side or however they are but then there's ones with little hooks in them which is where the the title comes into play, I guess, where like sometimes you have to move the straight ones to move the curved ones. Uh, that way you can kind of finish the puzzle that way. And like at first, like the first 10 puzzles or so were like super easy and whatever. And like, I'm still on a point at the game where the puzzles are simple and I don't know if they're going to get any harder than what they are, but it's super, it's just enough of a challenge to where, Hey, I'm going to play this for maybe 10 or 15 minutes before I go to bed you know, and kind of work my brain before I, I fall asleep here. And, like, it's mm-hmm. really fun. It's only $1.99 on the eShop. It's not on sale. It's not any type of promotion or anything. It's just $1.99. So, um, it's... Yes, and, and literally, everybody, before we had this recording, <laughs> I brought the game on Switch. Cause yeah. 
I, I took the look at the picture and I was just like, I, I love puzzles. I love puzzle games. You know, of course, we talk about Tetris. Um, uh, Which we'll no. continue to talk about Tetris today. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, like uh, uh, Puzzle uh, Planet League, uh, or Planet Puzzle League, that, that stuff like that. I love when I could get myself into a new puzzle, even with Box Boy and stuff. It's just like, I love something that works my mind because... Just like you said, Corey, it feels like it's ten or fifteen minutes, but sometimes you get you get like sucked in, and it's like an hour or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's puzzle games are are fun, and and you just get like this has that nice kind of uh, 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 loop where like you're like, oh man, I just solved that puzzle. I'm gonna do one more, and then you do end up doing like ten or fifteen more, and the half hour goes by, and you're like, yes, dang. I should just probably go to bed. Just one more. Just that's one more. put, dude. <laughs> literally, that's Pushmo all day for me. Yeah, Pushmo, man. What a great game. Where's <sighs> that game on Switch? You know what I mean? Where's that game that, on Switch? Where's Pushmo? That, Where's the Pushmo collection? We're getting Box that, Boy. Where's Pushmo? That's the next one. It's at the Nintendo E3 conference. <laughs> I, I could just what? see it be like a surprise at Day Treehouse Live. You'd be like, oh, dang it. I'm surprised there's not a Pushmo level in Smash. <laughs> oh, and like all I, and like all the like the little pu- the little ga- dudes that push the blocks around like just uh-huh. push in and out different platforms <laughs> <laughs> messing up your uh fighting and yeah stuff. Ooh, that'd be a cool level i know yeah. oh man yeah this is a good show i'm feeling really good uh yeah. so so i've i played about an hour of hook it's it's good i i really recommend it's Look, man, it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. You might as well just buy it, right? It's 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 awesome. Uh, I tried a little bit of Fortnite on Switch because they made those changes uh, to the season or to the well season the season pass, but like uh, mm-hmm. the map and everything, season eight, and it's cool. It's got like a little cool pirate theme. I kind of want some of the outfits, but I'm not spending fifteen dollars on an outfit. I'm sorry, I got I got games to buy. You know what I mean? Division just came out. Just I I got things to. Got things, other things to buy, you know. So, did did you get that for PS4 or are you still doing it on one? What division? Yeah, I got it on PS4 because my Xbox it won't connect to the internet. Oh, okay. I, I still have to send it in, and like, you know, we need to talk about it, and it it sucks because I I bought Anthem on Xbox originally, and I couldn't I couldn't connect to the internet, and so I did a hard reset on my Xbox last night. Uh, and started re-downloading everything because it connected. Yeah. But when I woke up this morning, my Xbox was off, so I don't know. My wife might have come in and turned it off because uh, she doesn't like it when things are running because it makes the electric bill go up. <laughs> oh, so my look, my wife is very like, you know, money kind of. She watches everything like a hawk, and I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, here's. Here's the rent money, whatever. I'm going to go buy games because, <laughs> you know, you don't have any hobbies, so I'm going to go buy my hobby. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She, she she does a good job of making sure we stay alive and fed and alive. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm just the big kid who runs around the house. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so so I played a little bit of that. It's I mean, it's Fortnite. It still plays the same. It's fine. I... I don't know. I, I I like Fortnite enough, but I, there's other games that I just would rather play, you know. And I'm actually kind of surprised the division doesn't have some sort of battle royale mode, which I'm sure it will in the future. Uh, but please don't. You know, we'll we'll figure it out later. But uh, I also downloaded another cheap game called Fear Effect Sedna, which was the uh, atrocious third game that came out last year, and. What I played so far, it's not terrible. It's not good. It's not good, but it's not terrible. It's a little slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're moving around the environments, it's really slow. Uh, you know, I, I only played for like 15 minutes. I was like, man, this is slow, and I'm tired. And I the division just got done downloading. I'm just gonna jump in here and uh, play that. But uh, it's. I'm going to play it because, like, the concept is cool. I just, I don't know how bad it gets. You know what I mean? So I'm going to yeah. try to stick it out. And it was it was only $1.79 or something. It was on sale instead of $30. I'm like, 
Well, it's probably worth checking out this hot mess for, you know, $2. <laughs> uh, I bought a lot of cheap games this week. <laughs> uh, speaking of, of games on sale, another game I want to talk about uh, is actually probably the highlight of my week. Uh, uh, Gris or gr- gr- Grease? Gris. I think it's Gris. Gr- Gris. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. For those of you that don't know, it's a... Everything is like hand drawn in this game. The animations, it kind of looks like you're watching like a uh oh man, it kind of gives me this weird like flip book vibe. It doesn't mm-hmm. like it, it the I think the game runs at 60 frames a second, but the way they d- uh distribute the frames makes it look like it's running at maybe like 20 frames a second and it's very deliberate. Yeah. Uh basically the whole concept of the game is you're trying to return color to the world. And I've played about two hours of it. I think I'm probably about halfway through, because uh, from what I've read, it's not a very long game. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's about two to three hours. Yeah. So I mean, I might I might actually almost be done. It's it's it's. I, but I'm also like taking my time and walking around everything, trying to make sure I can get places and stuff. So uh, it's a very beautiful game. Uh, it's not a game that I think you would play for just just for fun you know it's really mm-hmm. trying to deliver something different and i really appreciate that and like just the just the hand drawn style and just the the way they use the colors and when you return colors to the world it, the way they like re-implement the colors into the world is just something really awesome like that probably like maybe 20 or 30 minutes in whenever you unlock the red and like you're kind of like falling down <laughs> this uh falling down and like you just kind of see the sun kind of come up behind you and you run over and you kind of climb this tower and then you just see the big red sun kind of behind you and it gives you the title of the game or whatever man what a cool moment i took some i took some snapshots of it you can go to my twitter and check it out uh some some uh, screenshots from switch it's it's a it's a really cool game it's on sale right now for 14 dollars it kind of reminds me of like if Journey was hand drawn in two D almost. Uh, it's it's it it's a game that you can't really fail at, right? It's it's just one yes. of those games where like you just kind of move through the world and kind of check out the art and uh, man, that there's this moment where like you kind of walk across and there's two kind of broken hands laying on the ground, and like yeah. I kind of just like stood there and like looked at it. I'm like, man, somebody like really studied how to, the intricacies of how a hand works <laughs> to draw and, this. And because Aaron, everybody, I have a review of the game on NGR radio and I, I kind of feel like this and I've never would ever think I would say this or think this. I think Santa Monica needs to look at this art style and make a God of War game out of this. Because it fits right up their alley of God of War had this art style. Mm-hmm. They can still, like a, uh... they can still, yeah, they can still do their big thing for their console. <clears throat> but I was just like a, a nice story, some good combat, and some you well know, designed art with this. You know what they could do, honestly, like it, in, before, like God of War, f- what five comes out or whatever. Yeah. They could use this kind of concept. And you know how Assassin's Creed came out with those 2D kind of platformy things? Yes. Uh, you know, what, a couple years ago at this point? Like, yeah. they could kind of tell the story in between God of War 3 and, and God of War 2018 via this art style of how he got to uh, uh, this area of the world and how he be- kind of restarted his life or whatever. Like, I think that would be a really cool way to tell this story that particular story you know and yeah you could add some combat in there if you want but i if they were just to release this as like just some kind of thing yeah that'd be really cool there's a game on ps4 called apathion that does something similar to this uh it's like it's just like a. it kind of reminds me of if guacamole was done in like a greek art style with like uh pottery like you know like the 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 art you see on the side of old greek pottery and stuff yes that's what that's pretty much what a pathion is it's it's kind of like guacamole with that but like i think that would be really cool to infuse this art style with that and kind of make some sort of 2d side scrolling thing uh to explore you know it, i i agree with you that's actually a really cool idea 
Yeah, it's because it's just and when you get further to the game, the art and the color is just so expressive. Like this is an artistic expression game. Yeah, and it's and it's just something so captivating that I feel like. I'm glad someone did something different in 2018, <clears throat> and I want to see this continue for because I think these are now the kind of the games that I'm looking for. And we talked about this about graphics and art styles. Just like this is what kind of makes indie games and big triple A games separate, and why some indie games stand out personally for me mm-hmm. better than some of the first and third party triple A because they're taking a risk, doing an art style and doing something they've never seen. Even I mean, like even when I seen Cuphead, I, I praise uh, the developers who did Cuphead because it's something that we never see, and that mm-hmm. made me want that game more. Yeah, and like you know. I- I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey and the Division and stuff, and like I really appreciate those games a lot, you know. And, but like when you when you boot up an Assassin's Creed game or the Division or something along those lines, you know, mm-hmm. you like you know what you know. You, I mean, gameplay and, and and stuff aside, like you know what you're going to get when you turn those games on, like a realistic style, uh, kind of you know, gritty kind of you know. It's that type of game where if the indie indie developers take more of a risk in terms of art style and gameplay and stuff and sometimes it works out and really stand out like you know gris does and hollow knight and shovel knight and uh you know even ape out you know they they do some really cool things with art and gameplay that maybe these bigger companies just don't take the risk on because they have shareholders to appease and you know that kind of thing so i i, yes. I agree with you 100 percent. i guess is what i'm saying i'm just i just am rambling again uh man i've been playing a lot on switch dude I, ape out i've been playing ape out a little bit i really suck at it but it's fun to throw people in the walls and stuff uh you know it's it's there's gonna be a quick look going up uh sometime this week of a lot of these games because you know we we got some feedback on youtube content or the the lack of <laughs> recently and like i i know we've just all been busy and i'm trying to get stuff prepared and we have actually have ed and i are gonna have a meeting about pal blocks youtube page and see what we want to do with that uh and see if we can kind of you know across the board actually every channel we just want to kind of like provide at least a, a quality of video or two a week instead of like trying to uh get things out just to get them out so uh but we'll we'll revisit that topic later i've been playing starlink a little bit of starlink uh you know that flying feels really good. Just that, my that. copy came. My copy came in, dude. Like literally, that after we talked about it and I did that order, <laughs> like probably about three days later, it came in. I'm like, that was quick. Yeah. I here's here's the here's here's how it goes. I tell Ed I like a game, he buys it, and then it just yeah, that's how it works now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just got my my little R wing right here. Pew pew. Yes. Except, I had to get it digitally because this stand doesn't work. So, uh, oh. <laughs> it's it's fine though. It was it was cheap. It was on sale. Uh, and then uh, I've been playing War Group still. Uh, I've been getting back into Captain Toad uh, because that DLC came out and that trailer kind of was like, yeah, I want to play some Captain Toad. <laughs> yeah, uh, new Super Mario Brothers. You I've been playing some more of uh, a bunch of games that I've talked about before. But the the last game I want to talk about is Tetris Ninety Nine. Uh, Dude, that win still just is avoiding me. Uh, the, the win is avoiding me. I've come in second place. A second I've I've come in the top five probably Oh gosh. Probably close to thirty times now. Yeah. And I've probably come in second place at least half of those times. I cannot get the win, man. I cannot get the win. Uh, Why can I not get the win? I don't know, oh, man. I but like I've been watching. I've been watching Tetris videos of how like how do I know when to attack? How do who do I attack? You know that kind of thing. And like yeah. what I learned is like you can actually touch the. You know how they show all the other players on the side of the of the screen. Yes. Like you can actually touch the screens on which ones you want to attack. So I've been trying to do that. Uh, I've been trying to learn how to use the right stick and stuff and it's uh i just can't get it man i can't get it Uh, it's it's 
It sucks, man. I've yet to win in a Battle Royale game. You know how many Battle Royale games I've played? I've played Blackout with Jesse. I've played Apex with Matt. I've played Tetris. I've played Fortnite. I've played PUBG. I can't get a freaking win in Battle Royale. <sighs> Sorry, that was my loud, angry voice. <laughs> uh, but, man, Tetris is ah, Tetris 99 is so good. I even it went is. back to Puyo Puyo Tetris and played a ton of Tetris, just regular regular tetris i almost cursed that would have been bad for a family show uh just grinding out some tetris and being like i gotta do this i dude i played so much puyo puyo tetris last week that it was like i in regular tetris in in what in the puyo puyo tetris you get like if you get to level 15 you win quote unquote yes i did it three times last week and i was like man i'm going back tetris 99 do the first match in a tetris 99 third place I was like, come on. Ugh, so close, dude. So. I, I, I told Corey this. Uh, even Jesse, I told this in our chat. I was just like, without a doubt, Tetris 99 is already nominated for Game of the Year. Yeah, it's like, it's. I think it's... Uh, well, I have a short list. Uh, I've, every game I play this year, I'm putting on this list, and then I'm going to order them at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so, But yeah, Tetris 99 is, is up there for sure. So far this year, it's pro- it's definitely in my top three this year, and I, I'm, you know, I haven't really ordered them yet. But like, that's man, who thought in 2019 Tetris might win Game of the Year? <laughs> right. I mean, we said that about Tetris Effect last year, and now we're playing another Tetris game that might win Game of the Year. Jeez, man, we're just <sighs> it, it's 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 putting your skill, uh, actually your actual skill with others around the world and not and not being upset about it well yeah for some people yeah so you just want that number one and when you get that I, number one i am celebrating i refuse like to give tetris 99 game of the year until i win a match <laughs> 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 that's the deal i would give tetris 99 my game of the year if i win <laughs> uh no i'm just kidding uh but yeah man tetris 99 is really good uh it's eh, man what a what a fantastic game uh i'm gonna save i'm gonna save my xbox talk for for arsenal x because i've been playing a ton of assassin's creed and i played a ton of the division last night uh Mm -hmm. moose and i actually went around in in a wrecked shop in some in some washington dc so uh but how far did you guys get to i'm like level five uh i i we, but I haven't really done a lot of my story stuff. I just jumped in with Moose, and and you know he was he's like I think he's one mission ahead of me. But we just we just went around doing side missions because there's a point where you unlock a bunch of side missions, and we just went around doing that so nobody would get uh, behind in the story stuff. So okay, because you yeah, know cause, story missions kind of suck to replay. <laughs> yeah, because at, at the point that I'm at is like it's where the beta. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, but but the beta was we got to save the daughter mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. But my game crashed them, like the server crashed. Um, yeah. And I'm playing this one on, on one everybody. So um, I'm gonna go back and catch up because that's where I actually ended the beta at. I was just like, okay, I played enough of it. I still had Ethan to get through it and everything else. So I was just like, I let the beta in without wearing it. Um. So when I finish the first part, I could start exploring more of the world. Um, yeah. So, uh, so uh, that's that's all I've been playing on Switch. Really, I uh, I've been eyeing this Final Fantasy IX icon on my Switch for a while, and uh, <laughs> it keeps eluding me, man. Because all these great indies keep coming out, and then you know my my main games right now are are Assassin's Creed and the Division. So, but right. Uh, and I think what Final Fantasy VII is. Uh, it's Tuesday? out already. It's out already. It's it dropped. It, yeah, I think it came out Thursday. Yeah, it's out because I saw it on the eShop. Unless it, unless I saw it under like coming soon games coming soon. It might be Tuesday. I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure. We all know how much I love Final Fantasy VII, so I I'm really up to date on that game. <laughs> uh, but Ed, what have you been playing this week? Okay, so, um, <clears throat> like I said, uh, I've been playing Tetris 99, still in the 50 range. I'm going to get back up to, I'm trying, I'm trying to get to 12 and trying to get up there. Um, I, 
uh, Widow Quartz. I played Widow Quartz X the demo, uh, the one that I downloaded last week, and it's pretty much people who could think of Geometry Wars, but like an eight bit thing. Um, I played it with the Joy Cons, and I think I'm gonna end up playing it with the Pro Controller, and it's quite fun. What's this game called? A uh, Riddle Corpses EX. Oh, okay, I know. I, okay, yeah. Okay. So it has like some sexy girl anime yeah, picture yeah, on it, yeah. but then you play it and you'd be like, "What the world is this?" <laughs> uh, but it's it's kind of cool, very arcadey, very fun. Um, Nothing like a sexy keeping... anime girl to sell a game, am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, but uh, really, I've been focusing on uh, Harvest Moon Light of Hope uh, Special Edition. Um, I kind of actually uh, did something stupid because I didn't think about it, and it actually made me progress the game. So there's a mine that you go in, and uh, you go in that mine to do get, like get some resources like uh, iron or like. Uh, uh, diamonds and stuff. Well, I was just like, okay, why is this only one level and I'm not going anywhere? And the game does not teach you this at all. So I'm digging around and I hit something and there's another ladder. It takes me down to the second level of the mine. And I'm like, uh oh, I didn't know this. Because I was just wondering, I'm just like, how am I going to get these, uh, these materials so I can upgrade my items and stuff? Do I'm at like I think level thirty one, and it just like kept mining and getting stuff, and like open it helped me open up some more shops and stuff and more pieces of the land, and I was just like I'm sucked into this game. I got me a cow, I got me a chicken. I'm about to hustle up and uh, save up some money so I could get some sheep, so I could get some wool, and it's just like this game has sucked me in and. I, I kind of going to be putting it on the side uh, due to the fact that Yoshi's Woody World is coming out in two more weeks. Um, and guys, we have a contest that you can answer in to get a copy of Yoshi's Woody World. Yeah, I, was gonna, to- I thought about that after I said no house no housekeeping. I was gonna I was gonna go into the contest details before we got into the news stuff. Uh, oh well, we can. We still got time because uh, I'm gonna save uh, the AX stuff because I played the finished Devil May Cry Five and uh, the review is up at this point, and so you guys have seen my score. Uh, I yeah, hmm. I will speak more about that on Arsenal X. So uh, oh, for PlayStation Four, downloaded uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, but haven't really played anything on PS4 uh, due to the fact of getting uh, doing DMC Five, um, getting that together. So now that and now that I'm doing uh, uh, now that I'm doing uh, the Division Two on Xbox One, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on too. Um, so, but yeah, for Switch, I'm doing like mostly Harvest Moon. Going to be jumping back uh, into Captain Toad, like you said, Corey. Um, Fire Emblem Warriors. I'm going to finish because uh, I got like um, I got some uh, two days going to be off back back to back. So um, at the time of this recording, I should say. So when you guys uh, see this video. Um, I have had those two days off, but I'm like digging in into some gamer dude on Switch. Like literally, like I'm probably gonna be digging into all three platforms and getting some progress done. Um, cause I need to get uh back to my NX challenge um hmm. and get ready for the cavalcade of video games that's coming out because <laughs> the Kiro's all Sekiro uh Shadows Die Twice is also coming out and I gotta be ready for that before I jump into Yoshi. because um, once Yoshi <laughs> drop it's it's pretty much switch from all out. Uh, yeah. until day's gone. Yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah, when dude when Sekiro comes out, just be prepared for like Three months of Nerds Gone Rogue proper podcast to be just Sekiro all the time. <laughs> and, well, you're not getting it right. No, I'm not getting it. Okay. I don't. I don't care about that. I mean, like it. It looks cool, but just 
from software games just aren't for me. You know what I mean? Like I, I tried Bloodborne. I've tried Bloodborne, and I want to. I want to finish Bloodborne. I'm almost there. I'm almost done. Mm-hmm. But like, I just they're just not for me, man. I like the idea of it, and like, I actually don't really think Bloodborne's as hard as a lot of people make it out to be because it's it's all about like mechanics and and timing and patterns and stuff and that to me like that's super easy to follow but like i don't know dark souls is too slow bloodborne's not really i don't know i just and and i always say that i I respect bloodborne i think it's a good game um i just feel like neo is better yeah and like i think, I think neo would Neo's be more my, yeah i think neo would be more my speed and like who knows maybe sekiro is like gonna be fast like neo or whatever but mm-hmm. uh but anyways yeah if you want your full updates on sekiro just uh, you know matt and moose i'm sure will have a ton to talk about to the point where i might just take a couple weeks off <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh no i'm just kidding uh but yeah that's uh where were we? Where, what were we talking about? I don't even remember. Uh, well, we uh, the contest for Yoshi's. World oh yeah, World, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, get us the news. Yeah. Okay. So we're giving away Yoshi's Woolly World. Uh, comes out what next week? Right next Friday. Yes. So uh, if this post Tuesday, so like n- eleven days from now. Uh, so that means next weekend we will be uh when we record we will be announcing the winner of Yoshi's Crafted World. Uh, for the Nintendo Switch, we are giving away a North American code for the Switch. Uh, so uh, it's not a physical copy. I'm sorry. I just that's just how we we're, we're doing it. So uh, all you have to do is subscribe and uh, post your subscription a screenshot of your subscription in our Facebook group, facebook.com/groups/slash Nintendo Power Block, or uh, tweet at us and follow us on Twitter at nintendo underscore p block tweet us a a image of your subscription or put it in our facebook group with your favorite nintendo memory uh you know it's uh we've gotten a lot we got a lot of entries so uh yeah i will be gathering those all up next week and and making sure we are ready to give out that code uh we you'll be getting your code through uh email from our nintendo power block email account so if you want to uh email us at nintendo power block at gmail.com uh you'll be receiving an email with your code through uh the email platform so uh yeah that's uh that's that's how we're doing it and so enter this is your last week to enter and uh yeah get them in oh and one more thing everybody uh i did get the uh 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 the grip fit the fit grip uh the one that you slide in. Yeah. Um, I did get that, and I haven't posted any pictures or uh, taken it out the box, but um, I will be talking a little bit about that uh, and posting pictures later on um, this week, so you guys will be able to check that out. Um, I, I like. I literally just got it, just like, oh, I need to start this, but um, other stuff came up, so uh, oh. I will be talking to, about that and <clears throat> hmm. nice, nice. So, all right, we're going to get into uh, some some news discussions here. Uh, let me, where is it? Where did I go? Sorry, everybody. Uh, all right, so recently there's been some uh, rumored or teased games <laughs> about to come to Switch. I know PAX is coming up, and I know Jason and Jeff are going there. So uh, you can follow Mr. Hefe and Gimpy J with two Ys on Twitter and on Instagram, and you can find their... their uh, Pax excursions there. Uh, yes, I, I I went last year and it was it was a fantastic time. I would have gone this year, but you know, baby, baby happened. So, and apparently diapers are more more important than you know me having a good time in Boston. <laughs> that wife, man, jerk. I'm just kidding. Uh, so I'm just gonna list. These recently teased, rumored, or announced games for Switch, and we're just going to have a general discussion on on which ones we hope, which ones are listed, whatever. So, uh, Mutant Year Zero was spot on Gamefly, which you brought up in our group chat. 
Uh, very exciting. That that is a fantastic strategy game. Uh, I if you have Xbox Game Pass, it's on there. Check it out. It's awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. I love I love the art style of that game. Uh, speaking of art styles, Borderlands Two or Handsome Collection was teased for PAX East. Uh, the image very clearly shows the the main girl from Two with the blue hair and the yellow bodysuit. You know, I don't I don't know any other names. I'm not really a big Borderlands guy, uh, but it showed a blurred out image running on the Switch. So. Really terrible secret. Uh, Sniper Elite V2 and V3 Remastered have been officially announced uh, for Switch. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter Physical Edition is coming soon via uh, Heart Machine's Twitter account. Uh, Castle Crashers was teased via Twitter, uh, which I know Moose is really excited for Castle Crashers. I've never played Castle Crashers. I heard it's a really cool side-scrolling brawler. Yeah, Um, really good. Originally came out on, what, Xbox 360, I think. 360 and PS3. Uh, and then Killer7 Extended Console Cut has been... Uh, it was suggested by by uh, the studio that... Uh, and I actually have a link to Nintendo Life in our show notes here. Uh, and the other rumor is that the Octopath mobile game might make its way over to Switch as well. So uh, a lot of... A lot of games to talk over here. We got we have a question listed here that we'll read as soon as we're done talking about this. But uh, I want to read this Killer Seven article real quick uh, for you, Ed, before we before we have this discussion. Uh, the quote is: "I have I had a very interesting conversation recently with the producer at Capcom, uh, Kobayashi-san, and we promised each other that we will take we will make a completed version of Killer Seven in the future." Only one-third of my original script was used for the game, so there was 60% not used at all. So the complete version will cover all of my script. It's not 100% going to happen, of course, but maybe in the future we'll be able to deliver the complete version of Killer7. I'll do it before I retire. So uh, maybe a future project on a ways out. We know how Capcom's been kind of uh, getting back into the swing of delivering fantastic experiences of the last few years, you know, probably starting with Resident Evil 7 and then Monster Hunter World, Resident Evil 2, etc., etc., and Mega Man 11, of course. So, yes. Uh, what do you what do you think of all these games, Ed? There's a lot here. Uh, Borderlands on Switch, <clears throat> I know that was rumored for a long time around launch, and then, you know, Randy Pitchford tweeted out that the conversations just stopped for some reason. Uh, so I mean, Borderlands on Switch might be cool. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. You you've played you've played Borderlands a lot, right? Or not a yes. lot, but like you've played Borderlands, and you think I? <sighs> okay, this is this this is my conflict. I would get Borderlands if someone else gets Borderlands. Um, well, I'll get if you get it, I will get it, and we can play okay. it for Switch, and we can yes. Um. Uh, We'll, one have to, of the we'll have to get Jesse a co- code and let him play with us too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll buy him one. Uh, this is the struggle and battle that I have with this game. Is that yes, I love the Borderlands series, and I do want to support Gearbox. It's just that Randy Pitchford it was attached to it still, and I don't want to support him on that. Yeah, he's kind of a questionable character, especially recently. <laughs> Exactly. Now, I said, uh, cause I, I feel like if they're going to do this and the hint of Borderlands 3 is going to come out, Switch needs to be added on to that count, added on to that list. If it's not, I'm not buying it. Well, if, they, I, I, if they're using the Borderlands engine, right, which they have no reason to change engines, right? Like, I, I'm... A hundred percent sure they're using the same engine for Borderlands Three. If the, I mean, yeah. if it's being, you know, I know it's heavily modified and whatever from their kind of original version of Borderlands, but like that's still it's still modified Unreal Engine Two, I think, and you know, with some aspects of Three in there. So I think they're working off Unreal Engine. I it's probably it's going to be an Unreal Engine game. So whether it's yes. Three, Four, whatever, like. That stuff runs on Switch. I don't care if it runs at 30 frames a second. I don't care if you like make the draw distance less. I don't care. We're at a point where Nintendo 
is like uh, Nintendo versions of these third party games are clearly making money for for publishers to take notice, right? And yes. you know, you know, there there's I know that Nintendo isn't like their main platform, but it's enough to make publishers notice. You look at Bethesda with Doom and Wolfenstein, and I know that's not the same type of game, but it's still those are still two really big franchises, and the fact that there's by the time Borderlands three comes out, there's probably going to be when do you think Borderlands would probably come out? This fall, I'm assuming. Next year. You think it'll be next year? Okay. Yeah. So, like, okay, say say they're going to position it as uh, 2K's kind of holiday game next year, right? Uh, it's got to, you got to consider it for Switch. You have to. Uh, multiplayer, take it on the go, play with your friends. That game is, that, the, that game design is made to be played with friends and what better way to do it than if you can take it with you uh make it cross play with the xbox version if playstation doesn't want to play nice uh that sort of thing make it cross gen if it if you want it on you know the successor to xbox one and ps4 like these types of things the conversation needs to happen and if it's not happening already it needs to start happening uh because i think i know there's a lot of games out there that don't that switch couldn't handle because of the tech inside the switch in general, right? Like I don't think the division or Anthem or those types of games would really run well on switch. If even if they got it running on switch, yeah, but borderlands, man, it's a, it's a simple cell shaded art style. It it's, it's, I mean, to be honest, like the worlds are kind of bland and boring, you know, like, I, I don't mean that in like a, in like a derogatory sense, you know, it's like, Pandora is a desert planet with with you know a lot of not so intricate landscapes. You know what I mean? Like it, if if Breath of the Wild, if you can have Breath of the Wild running on Switch, you can get Borderlands run on Switch. Yes, that, that I, mean, I think that's what I'm trying to say. You know, and and I th- I think Borderlands is one of those games that fits on Switch. You know, I know I know you you come up with some games that maybe we disagree on you know being on switch but i think borderlands is one of them well it it's just it's to me is that it's the randy pitchford thing to me and i just feel like borderlands 3 needs to be on switch now i would get it if it comes to switch because the problem the definitely with the problem with me is that okay if i'm forced to get this game i had to get it on ps3 because i got the first one up here i mean i mean ps4 i'm sorry i got the first one on ps uh, three and uh, Borderlands two on PS3. I got the Hens collection on uh, on the PlayStation. So I'm like, if I want to complete my, if I want to complete the, complete everything, I will have to get it on PlayStation. But I just feel like it is time now that you need some good visibility, mm-hmm. Gearbox and. Uh, Brandon Pitchford. And, and like, I, I, I know, I, uh, well, just to play off that point you just made, like, to announce Borderlands 3, right, proper, mm-hmm. and to announce, you know, some sort of Borderlands project coming to Switch, those are two very goodwill moves for them to, I mean, in general, to make Gearbox look good, but also, I'm pretty sure Randy Pitcher doesn't want the focus to be on him, you know, (laughs) and and like that. What a way to do that would be like, hey, Borderlands coming to Switch. That's a that that would be one. That would be one heck of a story for a lot of people, you know. That that right. And and don't treat the Switch version like it's a PlayStation Vita. Don't 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 treat it as it's a because it has lower specs than the other two systems it shouldn't be given no polish or no care you treat borderlands to collect have the cancel collection and if you're going to decide to do three you treat it just the same amount of respect that playstation 4 and xbox one is getting especially if you're especially if you're using unreal right right Which, you know and, and that is pretty optimized for switch at this point you know i know there's some things technically that it it doesn't do but like Unreal is pretty optimized for Switch, and if you have that game running on Unreal and you can use the the tools to scale it to mm-hmm. a, a smaller system, like there's no there's no reason that. I mean, look at again, look at Wolfenstein and Doom. Yeah, they're not the be, the quote unquote best versions of the game, like 
it they run at 30 frames a second they use motion blur to make you feel that that quickness and the textures aren't you know the best but like they were handled with care and they look they look great for the switch right they they feel great to play like the shooting feels great the the characters look great the story's all there like there's certain there's certain concessions you can make without cutting corners i guess is what i'm saying you know mm-hmm. and you were saying as, as well like you can do it right who cares if borderlands runs at 30 frames a second it's a co-op shooter you don't need the 60 frames to be competitive right, right. so uh i i agree with you i think I think a good test for them would be, hey, we're porting the Handsome Collection to Switch so we can get our feet wet and learning the, the architecture of the system. That way, when Borderlands 3 comes out, it can be optimized, right? Right. I think that's, I think that's a, the clearest path, in my opinion, for it. You know, I do know that the Handsome, if it does come to Switch, it'll probably be $60, and I know a lot of people <laughs> won't care for that since it's 20 on the other systems, but... Uh, I still think it'll give them the much needed uh, practice for to use the architecture. So, All right, uh, Killer Seven, uh, I would definitely get. Um, it's a game that uh, I could not find it in the store. Um, Capcom just didn't release it in my area, so and I was going to buy the GameCube version. I was going to get the original Capcom Five, <laughs> and couldn't find it at all. Uh, I have it. You want me to send it to you for your collection? I know you hold on to it. That's no, that's valuable. K- Killer Seven, you, I'm, dude, I'm not gonna play it. I promise you. I'll play just, it. I will send you a copy of Killer Seven. <laughs> uh, uh, I have, Elite. I have your address. It's saved, so it's coming. That is true. Uh, Stop Elite V2 and V3. Um, that's interesting. That's good that it's coming. They're not big games or anything, but uh, it has a fan base. Um, Hyper Light Drifter Fiscal uh, Fiscal Edition. I like. I'm glad that it, that is happening. Um, it, I think that's going to be a b- good collector's game for a lot of people. Uh, so I can't wait to say that. Uh, let me see that. Uh, Castle Crashers, of course. I'm by that needs to come to Switch. That that literally fits on Switch. Um, and because Behemoth did put a game out, uh, Alien Hominid, they put it out on the GameCube, and a lot of people love that game. And I think that's what helped them. Uh, get recognized of uh, who they are. So Castle Crashers, because it didn't come to Wii or Wii U or any other console, uh, I think for him, if it's big enough, it has made enough money that they need to put that on Switch. <clears throat> yeah. Um, for it. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then Mutant Year Zero was like oh, the, yeah, the big one. That's a perfect. That's a perfect handheld perfect, strategy yeah. game. Uh, I I've actually been playing that as well a little bit so uh it's it's really cool it's got a cool art style the characters are are pretty cool looking you know it's it's just a cool game and and i i really recommend that to anybody if you have xbox game pass it's there but to see a switch version would be really cool yes uh, and then uh hyperlight drifter is is getting a physical edition soon they said uh which is something i'm actually really looking forward to having so because hyperlight drifter is one of those games that just like Man, it's really cool. Uh, and, and Corey, yeah, uh, is it? Oh no, you guys could check our Nindy showcase for that. Oh yeah, it's in. Uh, I think it was what we ended with season one was yes. Hyperlight Drifter. You should check that out. It's a fantastic game. Uh, before we get into these questions, I know we have a question that has to deal with this. I just want to mention two other things since we are kind of running long. Uh, I just want to mention these last two things and, and have a little conversation on these. Yacht yeah. Club Games teases the new game they're publishing coming to coming to PAX. Uh, looks kind of like a. I tweeted at them. I said, "If it's Ninja Turtles, I'm going to die." Because <laughs> like, because like, it kind of reminded me of the arcade game where they're all kind of standing up on the rooftop lo- overlooking a city, and you just uh-huh. see their bandanas waving in the air. Uh, uh, and then uh, Heart Machine, the the studio behind Hyperlight Drifter, also announced their new game. Uh, called Solar Ash Kingdom, which looks phenomenal. That art style, did you see the trailer for that? No, I didn't. Oh my gosh, dude, the art style looks so cool. Imagine, you know the art style for Faye? Yes. Imagine if Hyperlight Drifter was done in that art style. 
<gasps> but it, and in and in 3D, like it kind of has that vibe. Uh, but it has like it has like really sharp like edges to it. You know, very uh-huh. like bo- a very boxy look to it, but still like really stylized and everything. I highly recommend you try to watch that soon. It's it's amazing. It's really I, cool looking. I know they because uh, they had announced it. Uh, but didn't nobody actually had a? I didn't know a video came out of it. Like there was no video that I seen, and then maybe maybe because it was just Twitter that you know it got announced, and they didn't post a video until like later. So that's why I didn't know they had a video. Yeah, for it. yeah. Uh, you know if th- that trailer's out there. It's cool. It's it's man. It's got a really cool look to it. Um, so. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna answer some of your guys' questions now, real quick. Uh, you know, I wanted to get to these because we've been, I've I've had to move some questions around because we've been going along the last couple times. Just <laughs> you know, we it's this show, man. Every time we say we're not gonna go long, we always go longer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, Manny Hernandez asks, "Where's Super Shovel Knight and Shovel Knight 64?" I don't know. You're gonna have to ask Yacht Club, but those are two games I really want. I think it'd be really awesome. Um, they're they're not coming uh, due to the fact that they're making a new game and they're tightening up the uh, the DLC content for uh, Shovel Knight for the Kings the Kings one. Yeah, King of Cards. One. Can't wait. King of Cards, and then they're gonna get uh, that physical and amiibo stuff ready. So they're working on that. That's their focus. So Shovel Knight sixty four and the other one. Don't no time soon. Don't expect that at all. Anytime, oh, dude. But like Shovel, Shovel Knight's in ukulele, and he's he's a quest giver in ukulele, and him in three nice. D in that world just makes me want like a Shovel Knight platform, like a like a Mario sixty four style platformer. <laughs> um, I still want him now on Smash after seeing him. I'm like, oh dang it. Uh, let's see here. Ashley Davidson asks, "Hey guys, love the show." With all all these games being announced or teased for Switch, there are there any other standouts not out that you would like to see on the system? Just recently subscribed because of Nerd Gone Rogue podcast. Thanks, uh, man. I don't know the big we- ones. I mean the the big ones for me. Are, it, the Mass Effect trilogy is the big one for me that I would like to see. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if it's not on Switch, like the, that's just a game I would like to see those games come forward at some point uh oh, i i i would love to see spec ops the line oh, yeah spec uh, ops is a out. great game yeah uh titanfall 2 i have always mentioned um i, I you know we we talked about dreamcast and stuff because i feel like um like soul caliber 2 i would like to see on it uh power stones uh collection we're getting great neo geo so i'm not worried about that um i think i would love to see like a dance dance revolution um on switch you know what i just thought of it <laughs> it's gonna make well it makes me feel old i don't know if it's gonna mm-hmm. make you feel old this september is the 20 year anniversary of the dreamcast <laughs> oh wow Jeez. we're gonna have to do a dreamcast episode that that day yes uh, yes everybody i will be with Corey for a while and uh uh, doing some games. Um, you know what? Uh, the court games, uh, K O R G, that came to the 3DS. Yeah, I would like to say I would. I was thinking about this yesterday. Um, uh, I would love a music making game on Switch. I think there was one on PS2 called Club World, where you can make house beats and stuff. I would love to have that on Switch. We, would, and, we like, would lose Jesse forever. <laughs> oh shoot, me and Jesse <laughs> might be throwing out mixes and stuff like. <laughs> Well, like, I guess I'd be running a solo podcast then, because you guys would just be <laughs> no. off making music. <laughs> uh, but I would, I would definitely love to see that, and you know, we still getting stuff for Nintendo Online. So, uh, Kid Nick Guy, I would love to see. And um, uh, this is going to sound weird, but Shinobi, I would love a Shinobi collection to come to Switch. Oh, man, what a what a series, Shinobi. Yes. Uh, I, honestly i really don't know there's too many like for me the switch already has too many first party games to even mm-hmm. like try to remotely care about some of these third party games to the point where it's like if i can just have really quality first party games and the indies like that's enough for me uh there's some wii and wii u games i would really like to see come over uh and even i would actually like to see gamecube games come over as well but 
Yes. Um, uh, you know. I have I have a very weird one, so everybody just, oh just I might get the title wrong, but I now her. hold on is this is this is this a weird one in terms of like Ed weird or normal people weird? Because like sometimes uh, when you say I'm about to say a weird one, it's like the most normal thing I've ever heard come out of your mouth. <laughs> it's a it's a Ed weird one. Um, I Hinder by SquareSoft. Um, it was their one and only 2D shoot 'em up. Yeah, game. I that was for what PS One, I think. I think, yeah, I think so. PS One or PS Two, but PS probably PS One. Um, I would love that to come. I would love to see Square Enix actually do stuff where they were out of doing the RPG games and like actually publishing stuff that they made that was an RPG. They don't do that enough or don't do that at all now. So I would love to see them bring that shooter. Um, tweak some things, but bring it back. And um, also, so uh, uh, Soul, Soul Reaver, Reaver. Legacy yeah. of Cain. Yeah, yeah, that's Legacy something of, yeah. I think a lot of people are, are clamoring for. Um, I don't know. I never really played that series, but I, I'm the way people have been talking about it lately. I kind of want to go back and like see what it's all about and everything. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know what game they need to bring forward? Blue Stinger. The greatest Dreamcast game of all time. <laughs> For you audio listeners, that's just shot me the dirtiest look ever. Um, yeah, I think I said so. <laughs> no, Blue Stinger is like this really weird uh, Sega. It was. It's weird because it. it well, it's like a resin. It's a. Re- Sega's Resident Evil kind of ripoff for Dreamcast, basically, but uh, it's a survival horror game minus the horror <laughs> it's just ridiculous uh it's this it's it's basically this game where you're like this uh ship cat I mean, you're not really a ship captain you're like this i don't know paramedic or something that's on vacation or whatever and he's taking a trip to the this island with his with his friend and it's like this scientific island where they're trying to resurrect dinosaurs or something the island's yes. literally called dinosaur island and you get off the island or you get off on the island uh because there's like this big explosion or whatever and you're stuck in, on this island trying to figure out what happened to everybody and everything. So uh, it's really funny. The main character is a big douche, and his sidekick is like the biggest, burliest dude ever. And he wears short jean shorts and a red bandana. So uh, his name's Dogs, by the way. It's funny. So uh, Game Informer did a really awesome super replay of Blue Stinger. I actually I've watched it like five times. Uh, it's just it's so funny. Uh, and the voice acting is just so bad. It sounds like somebody was on on a landline phone calling into uh. the recording booth, and like they just recorded it first take. It's fine. <laughs> so, oh, uh, last but not least, for me, uh, Castlevania: Lord of Shadows. Well, like you saw speech. that there was a Castlevania collection rated in like I don't know where it was, yes. somewhere across in Asia, somewhere. We might get a Castlevania collection. Uh, all right. This uh, next question comes from Sam Hall. He said, "What are your favorite third-party games on Switch?" I think Doom, and Wolfenstein are kind of the main ones. It's South Park: Sega Truth is great too. I know Ed doesn't like South Park that much, but yeah, uh, D- Doom, uh, Wolfenstein, uh, definitely. I keep talking about Harvest Moon. Uh, that's become one of my favorites. Um, definitely Dead Cells is a good one. Um. If, but if I'm just, uh, yeah, I guess indies I, do kind of count as third party. Yeah. But. <laughs> uh, yeah, Octopath Traveler is a great one for me. Uh, I, I kind of have to go. And yeah. if I've, you know, I'm going to try to keep indies out. So even though Dead Cells is one, uh, uh, Ikaruga because that's uh that's not really indie. That's Treasure, and Treasure was a big thing, but um. For a lot, of, for a lot of it, um, let's see, because um, I got a lot. Of, uh, Mega Man Eleven is a great one. Oh, Valkyria uh, Chronicles Four is a good one. Oh yes, that one is definitely good. Uh, Okami HD, uh, even though that's the, the remaster, uh, you guys need to be on that, and you need to play. It needs to be in your system. Uh, 
Dark Souls Remastered actually runs really well on Switch. I I don't know if you're like into those games or not, but that game mm-hmm. runs really well. Uh, uh, Luminous Remastered. Yeah, is so- a great one. Sonic Mania is actually really fun if you're a Sonic fan. Uh, I'm trying to see what else I have on here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Diablo Three. Uh, it's a must. Oh yeah, Diablo like- Three is like a. Yeah, I forgot that that came out. Uh, Rayman Legends is actually a really good one. Oh yes, uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris. Yeah, so uh, those oh, are. Oh, Corey, we're we're missing a really big important one. Uh, Mario Rapids. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, like, I guess it's. I don't really know if I would count that as like third party. It's but, Ubisoft. I know. But I don't see Mario Rabbids coming in. Oh well, it's fine. Yeah, you know what? I'll I'll give you that one. It's fine. Uh, our last question for the day comes from Samantha Cross, and we'll try to keep it tight since we've been going for that hour mm-hmm. already. Uh. Samantha Cross writes in and says, I was wondering with your announcement of restructuring your podcast, if that means your YouTube content will change as well. Are you putting your videos on hold? I remember you guys announced some retro shows and stuff like that. Um, the thing is, is like all that stuff is still coming. I'm trying, I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to get on a schedule of when I can like record content and do things. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ed, Ed and I work different shifts, so there's only like certain times of the week where we can actually do stuff together. And the past couple of weeks have just been super, as for me personally, just kind of stressful. And like, I haven't really been doing a lot personally on on anything. And I I know that's my fault, really. <laughs> just kind of, <laughs> I don't Mate know. Saying. Yeah, and I don't know. I I was trying. I'm trying to focus on like. I think all of us, you know, speaking for everyone at Nerds Gone Rogue, not just us two, that the podcasts are like the priority, <laughs> uh, you know, because they're the content that gets consumed the most, you know, yes. either, whether it's downloads or YouTube or, or Spotify or whatever. But, you know, and to keep that those the podcasts uh, consistently going is kind of our main focus. But I've been trying to figure out what we can do on youtube that uh and you know we talked about a little bit last week and like i want to refocus our channels on to for quality instead of quantity uh i know we've gotten a couple uh comments on on arsenal x in particular where like jesse and i are playing some squad goal stuff and it and you know i i see where they're coming from and i kind of agree where like it kind of feels like we're just putting the content out there to put it out there. And we're not actually like, I don't know. We're, we're especially the last episode of squad goals. We were like super frustrated and it, it just, I don't know. It, it just became kind of like this thing. And like, I, I like squad goals a lot. I want to, I want that show for Arsenal X to be like a, a staple of the channel. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I like that. And I like Royale with Cheese. I think Arsenal X actually has the strongest lineup of shows out of all of our channels uh, in terms of YouTube content. Uh, you know, and, and uh, with the other channels, like for this, for this, you know, we have Nindy Showcase that just ended, and uh, it's that show is designed to be a seasonal show. Yes. Uh, so you know that's not going anywhere. The retro show, the classically trained, which Ed and I have been playing a link to the past. Like, I need to edit those. That's my fault for not getting those edited and up. So uh, that's still coming. The quick looks are still coming. I just haven't had a lot of you know free time to to record those. And uh, plus, like you know, Ed and I still need to finish Pod and Play for Nerds Gone Rogue proper, um, which I think we're gonna finish this week with Jason. So. Okay. Uh so yeah, I there's there's things that we could do to be more consistent, but it's also like this isn't our job either. We all have to work and provide for ourselves and our families and other people that depend on us, so like it's it's hard to schedule it out, you know, and and we're trying and I think consistency is a is a big thing that needs to happen, but at the same time if we can't post a video that week it's not going to go up and that's kind of just how i've felt the last few (laughs) weeks (laughs) you know 
Yeah. It's, it's with me and Corey, we juggle a lot of projects. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, Corey does a lot of editing and, um, I really want to help. I, I, I want to get a new computer. I want to get some software. Um, I need to still get like something that I can stream, uh, stream my switch games with, uh, because most of my stuff, my streaming stuff comes from, uh, playstation and xbox and you know i'm i i gotta find time and be more committed to streaming that stuff streaming that stuff recording it and try to get it out to you guys um but But, i mean you also do a lot too with like you know we were both doing like three podcasts we both right uh and like if i'm i usually edit a lot but you also write a lot and and do a lot of things outside of of ngr as well and you know it's just sometimes sometimes you just want to sometimes you just want to like play a game and not have to worry about what it's for <laughs> you know right like i've been playing a lot of assassin's creed odyssey and it's been kind of nice just to play a game without commentating or telling somebody what i'm doing or trying to make be a performer while playing a game yes. you know and it's kind of nice just to do that once in a while, uh, <laughs> which I know is wrong as content creators. Like, I feel like we should, if we're doing something, it needs to be content for someone. But but there's sometimes you just need a game, like you said, just to enjoy. You don't, it doesn't, there's going to be some stuff from us that we're playing the game just for us. Now, if we want to make some content about it, we can. We could whether it's through our writings, whether it's through artwork, taking pictures, um, recording a podcast or a discussion about it. We'll get that out. But sometimes it's just like we just want to play a game for us that we enjoy and that's it. Yeah. So I mean we're we're working on it and you know, we're we're trying to also reorganize some stuff and make sure we have like everything's because another thing too like i've been looking at is like i don't want things to come out as on the same day as something else like like squad goals is on fridays and royale cheese is on tuesdays well i don't want a retro show to come out on a friday or tuesday so i'm trying to like right. fit all these all of our channels things together to get you know have like a cohesive kind of flow to it flow wow i did that naturally i didn't even mean to do that uh but yeah youtube content's coming uh ed and i are gonna work on stuff the next couple weeks to get it out to you guys that way and you know it's 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 uh i don't know i don't know where i was going with that it's it's coming that's i guess is what i'm trying to say but you know i i appreciate all the work ed does you know with or without me you know he does a he does a lot that a lot of people don't see uh you know too so um you know it's 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 common yes plus i took it upon myself the last couple weeks to like redesign everything because i was bored (laughs) one day and then i was (laughs) then i was like oh man this looks cool let me do it for everything and then it just became a project instead of something i was bored doing (laughs) so that was maybe not the smartest thing (laughs) so uh but anyways we are going to wrap up this episode of nintendo power block i want to thank everybody so much for watching remember you can find nintendo power block every tuesday at 7 a.m eastern time on youtube.com slash nintendo power block or on your podcast service of choice also remember to get your entries in for yoshi's crafted world uh our our winner will be drawn next week and uh, you'll be sent out a code just in time to play the game on the following Friday when it releases. So um, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Nintendo underscore P block. You can also join our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash Nintendo power block and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash NGR radio. You can also catch all of our content, including our other podcasts and shows on NGR radio.com, including Ed's reviews, which uh ed i think you're reviewing devil may cry 5 yes um so ed you wanna you wanna plug you yes plug plug you in (laughs) so you guys can follow me on twitter at that retro code you can check out option opinion on soundcloud and other podcast apps um the review for devil may cry 5 is up uh so you guys could read that 
um, and see what I get, what I rated it as, and also uh, going to be doing Yoshi's uh, Crafted World as the next game, and then following that, it will be Days Gone. So um, keep up with that. Uh, I am going to be trying to get an optional opinion uh, uh, feature uh, sometime uh, next month in April, and um, hopefully get some stuff ready for E3 because with the big changes that's happening, we got to see how uh, we're going to go about that. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, that's that's all I wanted to plug for you guys. And uh, yeah, everybody keep checking out uh, Pot and Play. Season 4 is up so you guys can watch uh, the latest episode and we will be getting ready to hopefully to do Season 5 and we have a lot of great games uh, lined up for that. A lot of great discussions that we are really going to have. So do check that out also. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, you can find me at CoreyNHD713 uh, you can also find me on uh, Nerds Gone Rogue and plenty of other Eddie? stuff around the oh, internet here. So uh, I want to thank everybody so much for watching. And until next time, we love you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>